Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Amir Abbas, and I'm here today once again with another live stream video. And today it is about a very important topic. Uh, this topic is uh, all of you know that is uh, all, everybody is talking about it in social media, in the mainstream media. And uh, today we are going to talk about a bit details of this topic. So without any further delay, what I'm going to do is to go into the details of this topic, which is rape in Pakistan, situation analysis. Before I go into the details of that, I have to make a disclaimer. I'm not an expert on different aspects of this topic. This presentation is made to provide a superficial situation analysis of this scenario. This should be taken as a starting point of discussion rather than rather than taking it as a conclusive opinion. Uh, with that, we are going to talk about a number of aspects of things. Uh, what we are going to talk about is uh, we are going to uh, let me remove these stickers so that I can not distract you. Okay, we'll be talking about the legal aspects of it, some history of the rape in Pakistan and some obvious problems which we want to highlight and in this video i want to request everybody who is live right now to please stay with me till end this will be a long video but i want to talk about a few very important aspects of this topic and i think this is a topic in which everybody needs to play some role uh, if you are online right now i request you people to please share this video within your contacts if you're watching this video on Facebook or on YouTube please share this there so that it can reach to maximum number of people and we can produce a lot of sensitization about this topic which is needed we need to play our role in this topic so going further some of the legal aspects of it now there are a number of aspects related to the crimin criminal law in Pakistan, which is the act, uh, this was an act which was initiated in, or uh, approved in 2016. And that means that uh, the police officials are responsible whenever there is a rape case, they are responsible to show the results, which means to capture the, uh, the perpetrators within three months. And if they do not do uh, the, the uh, The punishment of this crime can be death or, or imprisonment, imprisonment for the criminals. And if the police of public servants, for example, police who fails to carry out investigation properly will be punished with imprisonment of three years or fine or both. So this is a very serious matter from a legal perspective for everybody, for even for police, even for the person who is committing the crime. So if that case is this means that if it is followed properly and it is uh, carefully executed then uh, we can let me eliminate this crime from the country with this i'm going to talk about a brief history of this crime in pakistan and i have to emphasize over here is that these are some selected cases and these are some very famous cases which got attention from the media from the mainstream media or in the social media and they got famous but the actual number is huge and we have to know that it's huge these are some very famous cases and we start from 2002 where a very famous case when uh, Muhtara Bibi was gang raped on the orders of village council as honor rape after the allegations that her 12 year old brother had had sexual relations with the woman from higher caste uh, we are going to talk about some of these cases in detail as well, but I'm going to give you um, some uh, overview of these famous cases. And one thing I have to emphasize over here that normally I do not use references from Wikipedia, but I couldn't find a place where all of this information was very organized. So in this particular video, I'm using Wikipedia as a source. Uh, obviously, when you go to Wikipedia, you can also go to the uh, references and um, find out other uh, sources which will support this information which is being presented over here. So uh, going further, uh, what happened in 2005, a woman claimed to have been gang raped by four police officers for refusing to pay them a bribe 
so her husband could be released from prison. Prison. One officer was arrested and three have disappeared. Again, in 2005, a 23-year-old woman in Faisalabad made public accusations against the police, saying her husband had been arrested for creating forged documents. She alleges she was raped on the order of the chief of police for her actions. The police officer was suspended but not arrested. Again, uh, there is a famous rape case of Dr. Shazia Khalid at Sui Dera Bukti. In 2010, uh, Kainat Soru was a 13-year-old school girl when she was kidnapped and gang raped for four days. Uh, her protest has led to, I mean, there were many protests in this case that led to the murder of her brother, a death sentence from, from the elders of her village and threats of, from the rapist who after four years remained at large. In 2012, three members of the border police would remain uh, remanded into custody for raping five women aged between 15 and 21. The women claim that they were taken from a picnic area to the police station in Dera Ghazi Khan, where the police filmed themselves sexually assaulting the women. In 2014, um, a village council ordered gang rape that was carried out in the same Muzaffargarh district where the famous Mukhtara Bibi uh, incident took place in 2002. And again, in January 2012, a village council ordered a gang rape that was carried out in the same Muzaffargarh district where the, I think I'm, I apologize, this is a repetition. And then um, in June 2012, a 21 year old woman was gang raped and murdered in Laya district of Punjab province of Pakistan. There was another gang rape of a teenage girl. The rapists were later released by the court. Uh, in 2017, a panchayat ordered rape of a 16-year-old girl in Multan as a punishment for her brother's conduct. Again, in 2017, a 21-year-old woman was gang raped by four decades, decades during a robbery at her house in Multan. Then in 2018, a 7-year-old girl named Zainab Ansari was raped and strangled to death in Kasur. In the same month, a 16-year-old girl was raped and killed in Sargoda. A day later, in the same city, a 13-year-old boy was intoxicated and sexually assaulted by two men. In Faisalabad, the same day, a 15-year-old boy was found dead. The later medical reports confirmed a sexual assault. A few days later, the dead body of a three-year-old girl named Asma was found in Mardan, who had been reportedly missing for 24 hours. Her post-mortem reports points that she had been raped before her murder. And then we come to the famous case, which is giving a lot of information, which is uh, uh, getting getting a lot of attention from the social media and the mainstream media, uh, which is a resident of France was gang raped in front of her children in Lahore recently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide some of the details of these cases so we get some insight about what is going on in these situations. And as a reminder, what happens that if you want to join me in this discussion, you can uh, put that request in the comments as well. I will send you the link. In addition to that, if you have any questions or comments, you can also put that in the comments so that we can have a discussion which is interactive. So we start with the famous Mukhtar Mai case from 2002. And what happened in June 2002? Mukhtar Amayu was a survivor of a gang rape as a form of honor, revenge on the orders of a tribal council of the local Mastoi Baloch clan that was richer and more powerful than her Tetla clan in that region. Mukhtar Amayu, uh, Mukhtar Amayu spoke up and pursued the case and she stood up. Normally, the routine was that such victims would commit suicide, but she stood up, which was a very daring thing to do and pursued the case and was picked up by both domestic and international media. On 1st September 2002, an anti-terrorist court sentenced six men, including the four rapists, to death, to death for rape. In 2005, the Lahore High Court cited insufficient evidence and acquitted five of the six convicted and commuted the punishment, punishment of the sixth man to life sentence. Then again, um, 
the government and Muhtaram I appealed this decision and the Supreme Court suspended, suspended the acquittal and held appeal hearings again. In 2001, 2011, the Supreme Court acquitted the accused. Though she is being appreciated, this lady is extremely uh, worth respecting and she deserves a lot of appreciation for the stand she took. But the unfortunate fact is um, uh, that uh, she deserves the respect. She she des definitely deserves the respect, but the fact remains that she could not get the justice, and that is really a tragedy. She she took a very difficult stand, and she deserves a lot of respect for that, but she could not get justice, and that is really sad. Uh, going forward, in 2005, Dr. Shazia, there was a famous Dr. Shazia rape case on the night on the night of second January in the early morning hours of three January two thousand five. Dr. Shazia was awoken up by somebody pulling her hair. She was then strangled with a cord, threatened, blindfolded, pistol whipped, beaten, and repeatedly raped by a masked intruder at Sui Dera Bukti in the heavily guarded government-owned natural gas plant. He was severely injured in the attack, but managed to cut her hands. She managed to cut her hands free of the cord and sought help from a nurse. Her pleas to contact her husband instead of treating her, her, her plea to contact her husband was not uh, entertained instead of treating her medically. Officials were said to have drugged her into unconsciousness with sedatives for three days to keep her quiet and then transfer her to a psychiatric hospital. Her husband Khalid said that his grandfather demanded that Khalid divorce her because he felt her rape had rendered her a stain on the family honor. Khalid refused, so the grandfather assembled a mob to kill Shazia. In an interview with BBC, Dr. Shazia said that she was threatened many times. And it's just, quote, I cannot tell you how many times I was threatened. My life was made impossible. I'm still terrified. Unquote. And she also says that, quote, my whole career was destroyed, as was my husband's. That was my, that was why we left our country. And she, unquote, and she also says say that instead of getting justice, I was hounded out of Pakistan. I never wanted to leave Pakistan, but we had no choice. In the interview with uh, 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 and Shazia was quoted saying that, and this is extremely important, and I want you people to focus on this and to get the essence. I, she said that I did not get justice, and I will regret that for the rest of my life. And that is really a painful thing to not get justice. Then in 2014, there was another case when Panchayat also again um, returned and ordered a gang rape. So the beasts nurtured in the name of prompt justice were seen to be on the loose again after surfacing on Thursday of an incident in which Panchayat was accused of ordering gang rape of 40-year-old woman in revenge for her brother's alleged affair. Police and witnesses said that the Panchayat hearing lasted for 10 minutes. The Panchayat leader identified as Nawaz sentenced FBB to be raped by the men from the aggrieved party. Police and the witness said that the panchayat hearing lasted for 10 minutes uh, only. So that is really sad again. In, then in 2017, what happened that Multan, uh, again, Multan, in Multan panchayat orders rape of the alleged rapist sister. A 12 year old girl was allegedly raped. A panchayat was held to declare the verdict in the incident. The panchayat member directed the victim's brother to avenge the incident by raping the sister of the accused. And again in 2017, what happened that a newly married woman in Faisalabad repeatedly raped by panchayat were repeatedly raped by panchayat members. A girl who married against the wishes of her family was allegedly raped by influential members of a panchayat, which was approached for the resolution of the issue in Faisalabad. Three panchayat members repeatedly raped the victims after taking her to their own home and threatened to kill her if she attempted to flee or shot. The victims the victim finally managed to escape and reached her husband's home where she informed the family of her ordeal. Then in 2018, an extremely uh, 
distressing case of the murder of Zainab Ansari. Zainab Ansari was a seven-year-old Pakistani girl who was abducted. Her body was discovered, discarded upon a garbage disposal site close to the city of Lahore. The child had been raped and strangled. Her murderer, 24-year-old man Imran Ali, was determined to be a serial killer responsible for at least seven previous murders of similar aged girls. In the anti-terrorist court, it was found that Imran Ali was guilty of raping and murdering Zainab Ansari. The court handed him for, for her, the court handed him four counts of death of the death, one life term, seven year jail term, and 3.2 million in fine. He was, he was sentenced to death for the rape and murder of Zainab and 12 other underage girls and was executed in the early morning of October 17th. 2018 at Lahore's court lock, Lakhpat jail. So this is the only case in which the criminal was executed or uh, in all other cases, I mean, uh, nobody has seen anything like this. In 2020, the parliament of Pakistan passed the Zainab Alert Response and Recovery Act also known as the Zainab Alert Bill named after the Zainab, named after Zainab Ansari. The bill outline systems designed to improve the country's response to missing child cases. So this was a situation where, where the community took a stand and uh, the response was that at least something got happened. Uh, the next is uh, in 2020, as we are right now, what happened that a French woman was gang raped in front of her kids in Lahore. Uh, gang rape of a woman in front of her children after her car broke down on the motorway Victim is a resident of France. The woman, woman had alleged that she was a gang raped in front of her kids. A multiple men, men, her car ran out of fuel in Lahore. So these are some of the cases. And I have to tell you that the actual number of cases are very high. And we have to uh, um, identify a few problems. Some of the problems that attitude of the officials. We have been hearing a lot of issues, uh, a lot of non-serious uh, attitude from the officials, then we can see that where what is the role of the judiciary? We can question that. Who will take, who will make them accountable? I mean, uh, that's a big question mark. I mean, large number of criminals are free in the society and they are going here and there and who is going to bring them to justice? That apathy of the masses is a large concern because it doesn't happen to me. It means that I'm not going to take care of that. That is also a concerning point and it concerns me and it should concern everybody and it should concern every normal person. So the next important question is the that, uh, okay, I mean, an incident like this or which took place, I mean, which government officials are responsible for this? Who is going to answer from, get an answer from them? It is definitely someone's responsibility. And whose responsibility was that? Who is going to answer that? And who is going to have, hold them accountable? So these are some very important and difficult questions. Some more obvious problems are that when crime becomes a norm, then that is going to be very dangerous because if the mindset of the society is that we want to rationalize the problem and we want to go in a stage of denial, then crime is going to become a new norm. So are we ready for that situation? Do you want the crime to become a norm? This is a question which we have to ask from ourselves. Do we want that? Are we ready? Do we want to leave a society like this, where crime is becoming a new norm. So uh, this is all from my side, as far as this topic is concerned. This is extremely concerning for me, and it should be concerning for everybody, because it's quite serious. I think I will sign off for the time being. Take care for the, to all those who have listened to me uh, during this time. Bye.